going to be uh, talking education here from the Grapeview School District Superintendent Kurt Hilliard here. Uh, welcome, sir, to the show. How are you doing this morning? Great. Thank you. Now that you're here, right, this is a funny story. We've got to share this because <laughs> I've only been up there a couple of times. Once was after we got hit by all that snow, so it was kind of creepy up there going through. Uh, my boss took us up there, and we were checking the transmitter site, but your GPS took you to our tower, not to the station. Is that Correct. right? Yeah, I, I kind of knew I was in the wrong spot when I got up there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very remote location there, yeah, and yes. man, I was seeing prints in the snow, and I'm like scared to death of cougars and stuff, and I, I, I think it was a coyote. I, I had my wife match it on the internet, and she goes, there's no cougars up there. It's well, I thought I was, you know, I'm from Montana, so I thought I was home. <laughs> <laughs> I got up there. <laughs> Is that where you're, you grew up? I, yeah. yeah, grew up there re and uh, went to school there, and, re wow. and I was a superintendent out there and retired out of the state so that's fantastic wildlife is nothing new no, to you out no. there you have to deal with do you have grizzlies out there we do wow yeah. yep yeah, so I shouldn't be complaining about the squirrels <laughs> out here and stuff. They're fine. Um, of course, the gator is the mascot of the Grapeview uh, School District and the Grapeview School. And you are brand new as superintendent, so welcome. Well, thank you. Uh, what's exciting things going on? This school started last Tuesday, day after Labor Day? Yep, it did. Yep. Fantastic. And we're, uh, How'd that go? Full speed, no problems. Um, we're uh, about a third of our kids are from out of district, so uh, we're filling up. Uh, we have some oh. open open grades still but um in fact we have what do we have here a uh, first grade second grade sixth grade and eighth grade still open the rest of them are full and it's amazing how many do come from all the over around this area to that school district it's a beautiful school and it's just it's a perfect setting in the uh elementary there with, with just going through the forest and stuff and when we first uh moved up here to the area about a year ago it, it looks like kind of like a fantasy setting for kids to learn. I grew up in San Francisco where it's like the concrete jungle where it's the total opposite where everything's just concrete and buildings wall to wall and, and a lot of green but not as obviously everywhere as it is here but it's a really nice environment for the kids to learn isn't it just and you coming from a lot of nature of course in Montana was it a welcoming atmosphere for you just it, the it setting really of it and everything? It's a beautiful campus beautiful facilities the yeah. facilities are pretty new too they're only a couple years old from what I understand yeah. and uh, yeah it's, it's beautiful over there what um, do you see as challenges coming up, like as superintendent? Are there any on the horizon? Are like there certain issues that parents want you to tackle, or did you come with a kind of a full plate of stuff, or not really? Not really. No, and really, your first year, you should sit back and, and just watch and see what's going on, and and uh, keep doing the good things that they're doing, and, and maybe tweak those that are maybe need some work. But you yeah. don't want to come in and just change everything. And Maggie's still there, right, at the Grapefruit School. Maggie the dog. Uh, the, no, they uh, they left. Oh. That that uh, gentleman that was oh, there. No, yeah, really? he got a job in Olympia, I believe. Oh, okay. So Maggie was the dog that was kind of the uh, comfort, um, like support dog for the school. We thought that was such a great idea. It's sad that she's gone, but she'll be helping other students, I'm sure, in Olympia. But we thought it was so cool. The kids, you know, they get apprehensive, obviously, especially easing into school and for many a new experience or a new school district form, as you said, many transfer from other schools. And Maggie was just such a welcome sight to yeah. be there when the uh, kids drove up and the parents dropped them off. And right. It's a therapy. It's a therapy yeah, dog. Absolutely. And more schools ought to do that. I think that's a, it's a great but idea. You see it in nursing homes now. They're using them a lot and they're yeah. having a lot of success. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's great for rehabilitation, too, and things like that. Well, picture day coming up on Friday. That's always exciting. I always got nervous. Uh, my first uh, picture of <laughs> getting your picture taken, but that's coming up this Friday, right? Yes, it is. Yep. What other stuff's going on? Anything uh, in the next few weeks? Orientations go well? Or do um, you imagine those already happen? Are there any more in the works? Well, we have a, a gentleman, Jesus Villasosa, coming in from um, and doing some work on school safety and how we can train kids and staff um, how to be safe. If, uh, if if there's an incident at school, bad guy shows up and just training kids what to do and staff. It's a scary world we're living in. I remember, gosh, this, this is dating me. Back in the 70s in my grade school in San Francisco, I remember vividly when the school was on lockdown. It was the only time, I think, in my nine years there, it was K through ninth, uh, that we had that happen. But there was an incident with somebody, and again, wall-to-wall, -wall, concrete jungle. This is downtown San Francisco. And there was somebody with a gun, like in the apartment building next door, and some of the windows looked out to the school. And that was like late 70s, I think, when that happened. But obviously now kids are getting more prepared. I grew up with like earthquake drills mm -hmm. growing up in San Francisco. But now it's kind of sad, but it's it's become kind of a reality of, of these kids, how that they – do you notice – 
I know it's probably too soon to see, but any kind of increased anxiety maybe or your experience coming from Montana and what you were doing there with the incidents of these things in the news and you know, shootings and unfortunate uh, you events know, I like think that? This is my 39th year in yeah. education. I've been a superintendent for 34 years. Wow. And so I would say... You've seen a lot of changes in terms of, of what the kids prepare for, huh? Yeah, and I think the kids are under a lot more stress now than they were years ago. Um, kids have always under, been under stress. I mean, kids are kids. But the poverty level, uh, the drug use, all those things are... Social media, all those things are starting to um, cause a lot more stress with kids. And we're seeing it in the schools. It's That's far another different. thing. That's another thing. The social media, we notice that with our kids, too. There's just so much pressure to... You know, like certain things and all the likes they get on their pictures and just kids. The bullying has gotten so much worse now yes. than when we were growing up because it, it seemed like simpler times than when a bully would have to face you in school and not to get, you know, not to make this complicated or anything uh, controversial. But back then you could poke the bully in the mouth and it was over, you know, and then they would stop bugging you and stuff. And things have gotten so much more complicated now. And with social media, there's so much anonymity where kids can just pick on each other relentlessly, and well, you may not even know who, who the source is. You know, that's absolutely true, And but adults are doing the same thing. Oh, yeah. It's, adults are on Facebook and Instagram, yeah. all those things, and yeah. they say and say things that are maybe be, be totally untrue, and they don't have to defend it. And so social media is, is okay in one way, but on the other hand, it's been a real negative, too. Um, it's kind of sad what it's what's turned the people into some people into it's been a tough one yeah absolutely. we in fact we put in a just recently we put in a uh, on our website they can go in and it's called safe schools and it's so a parent or a student can anonymously report Im Im uh, bullying intimidation yeah. all uh, dr drugs weapons those kinds of things they and they can do it anonymously and they can oh, do wow. it four different ways texting phone uh, I can't think of the uh, on the internet. There's four ways of doing it, but yeah. there's for every option you can wow, think that's of. Great, so it's, that's great. That's great. It's something that they we needed. Yeah, and that's the number one fear I find with kids is that they don't want to be snitches. You know, they don't want to be considered snitches. But it's not snitching when you're contributing to the safety of not only yourself but your fellow students and right. keeping everybody. It, school shouldn't be a place where you're intimidated. It should be Absolutely a, a safe place for yeah, you. It, that's what we want. Is that we want a, a trauma sensitive, safe school. That's what we want, and that's what we're working towards. I think all schools are doing that. Absolutely. On the left hand side uh, below the main categories, there you'll see safe schools alert. You can click on that link. Parent resources, student resources as well. The website is GSD for Grapeview School District 54.org. GSD 54.org. Well, thank you very much sir, for being here. It was a pleasure having you, and uh, you're welcome anytime. Thank Come you. On, tell us thank what's you. going on in the uh, Grapeview School District. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. Kurt Hilliard, new superintendent coming from Montana and uh, joining the staff at Grapeview School District.